What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here in this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, guys, we have uh, about 9.25 million Rebellion packs remaining. And what I wanted to talk about today in this video was how that compares to the airdrop conflicts and what the schedule is looking like from a burn perspective and a sellout perspective. Now, uh, before we get into the, the airdrop conflicts, what is interesting about the way this is designed, uh, this, this burn schedule for Rebellion is designed, is that it's not about bringing up the date. It's not like we're burning 25,000 packs per day. We are just burning anything that is not sold under 25,000 packs per day. So even if we're selling like 20,000 packs a day, which is, which is a lot of packs over the course of a year, right? Because keep in mind, with this many packs remaining now, we're going to, we're going to be like, packs are going to be in the store and on sale until like this time December next year. I think it's 369 days. So I'm recording this on the 15th. Let's just say, you know, by by uh, mid-December probably is is when, you know, we'll see we'll see this, uh, assuming that maybe we have some days of, uh, of a bunch of sales. But my, my point with this is that unless sales of 25,000 or more come in in a single day, it's just going to be flat the entire time, right? We're, we're not going to be burning extra as we go along. We will just be kind of sticking to the schedule. Now, you compare this over to the airdrop conflicts, and we know that there's going to be nine cards and that each of these conflicts is set to last about 30 days. So you consider that's about nine months of actual conflict. So with it getting delayed into January, you know, an easy schedule would be to say beginning of January to the end of September. That's a full like nine months. But what if the team, you know, for example, puts some time in between each of the conflicts, maybe even up to a week, which could be a significant amount of time, right? Between when the conflict ends, we get the airdrop and then the, the next conflict begins. Well, there's, like I said, nine airdrops. So you're going to have like eight weeks in between that just extends it two months. Now we're only going to the end of November. So there'll still be packs available in the store after the conflicts uh, are, are done. But I'm kind of thinking about this the other way, right? Like, I, and I'm wondering if there's a way, uh, again, n nothing with conflicts is really set in stone. Obviously, the team is still working through everything. But uh, the, the thought that comes to my mind is like, one thing people are really, really scared of is a massive dump after the uh, after the conflicts are over, right? Everybody's just gonna be holding packs or extra cards, and then as soon as the conflicts are done, well, we just go into uh, we just go into a situation where a bunch of cards get dumped on the market. Now, I'm not saying that this would fully circumvent it, but what if there were no more packs left in store? after the conflicts ended, meaning that either, I mean, maybe we get lucky and, you know, a bunch of players come in sometime in the middle of 2024, sometime throughout 2024, buy a bunch of packs. And then, you know, uh, we, <laughs> the, the, the burnout date ends up moving up significantly or, um, you know, more likely, what if we are able to kind of extend the airdrop conflicts uh, or the schedule for the airdrop conflicts, I should say, so that they kind of last uh, where the, the last one essentially finishes or completes after packs are no longer available in store. Now, that wouldn't necessarily stop a dump, but also all these packs coming on the secondary market wouldn't be competing with the store either. So that's that's why I think that uh, maybe this is something that we should rethink. Again, it's like a year away, and unless something major happens, uh, and, and again, it would be a good problem, right? If a bunch of players came in and moved that data up significantly, uh, we are, we're not tracking at this point in time to have the conflicts end afterwards. Now, again, I don't know what kind of time frames they're expecting to have between each of the conflicts. All we know about conflicts is that there's going to be nine of them or nine airdrop cards total. And there will be, uh, you know, about 30 days for each conflict. Now, what could happen and what could be interesting, just because the team is trying to brainstorm and innovate and do, uh, you know, a bunch of fun, th fun things with the battle wagons and all that, maybe they find a way to integrate more stuff with conflicts that don't have anything to do with airdrop cards for Rebellion. Well, maybe it's something that like transitions to land or something, whatever, right? Where it's just like, oh, you are, if, you, if you're staking packs from the current set, then you get these certain benefits in game or in land or soul keep or maybe whatever else might come out, you know, uh, sometime in 2024. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm, I'm obviously speculating very hard there. But my whole point is that if we want to try and reduce the amount of dumping that happens after the conflicts are complete, I think being more thoughtful about when they end 
in relation to when the packs are completely out, right, from the store, I, th- I think we should. Uh, I-, I think we should try to figure out a way to have that happen. Again, if you're putting, if you're if you're putting thirty days for each conflict, it starts in January, and maybe you put a week in between. That actually gets us to the end of November, roughly, right? Uh, so that gets us pretty close. Uh, maybe maybe there's like an extended period, maybe whatever, <laughs> you know. So we're, I'm saying that we're almost there if we if we just you know kind of do it on that schedule. But obviously, the hope is that more people coming in, more players coming in, will help to soak up packs, and we'll see that date start to move up so that it's not set for, I think, was it December 18th or 19th of 2024 when packs will be completely gone, but hopefully earlier on in the year. Now, the last thing that I'll say about this is one of the one of the important things I, I, um, that I know that the team wanted to do at least previously, and I, I think that they'd still want to do it now, at least with the way Matt is designing things, is have a period of time between when Rebellion sells out and when the new set comes in. That's why I'm saying that whatever the next core set is after Rebellion, it's probably going to come in mid-2025, which would be really fun bull run times, right? Uh, and so if this is set to run for about a year, Uh, And Matt's kind of said we're roughly on like a 15 to 18th month schedule. I wouldn't even mind conflicts extending into 2025. Uh, And so it's just like, again, uh, hopefully the team is very flexible on this. They're able to look, you know, and run all the numbers, check all the data and uh, come to the same conclusion. But that's just kind of where my thought is on conflicts so that we don't get this position where all of a sudden people just dump on the market. Many people may hold because that could be an interesting time when all of a sudden it's just like, well, I've been holding on to all these packs. Yeah, sure. I might dump on the market, but guess what? I don't have to undercut the store because there's just not, there's no, there's no more packs available in the store. You can only get them from people who've been holding them. And that could still lead to people buying, overbuying, right? But uh, on the whole, you know, we're, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. It's like, it's going to be a long year in many ways. It's going to be a fast year in many ways, but um, I think it'll be fun to look back in this video and see what they end up doing with conflicts overall. But that's kind of my rough suggestion that I'm throwing out there. Uh, and feel free to kind of beat it up or poke holes in it and see uh, if there's any way that we can, uh, we can do it better. But that is all I have for you guys in this video. I'll catch you all in the next one. See you around the game. Take care.